In this video, I'm gonna be running power to an outdoor shed and showing you how I do it. Yes, I'm applying lotion. This is actually a shielding lotion that bonds with the outermost layer of your skin, provides protection and easy cleanup, but it doesn't leave your hands greasy. The first thing I need to do is locate the breaker box so that I can figure out a path to get to the outside of the building with my wiring. Since the panel is on that wall, I'm gonna go straight down with it and punch a hole through that wall. It's a quick change of scenery, but this is the outside of the wall I was just referencing. I'm using a hole saw bit, the size for an LB fitting to go through. LB. Oh shoot, I'm not cool. To get to the inside, this piece is not even all the way through the wall, so then you can just cut a piece of conduit in order to get you all the way through. Know that they do make a different cement for electrical conduit instead of the regular PVC one that you're probably used to. I'm gonna be adding an outlet, so then I'm gonna add in a straight piece of conduit, and then I'm gonna put my outlet up high so that uh, it's easy to access. And this all will be glued later, but I just wanted to show you the conglomerate I'm building. Then from the outlet, I'm gonna go into another straight pipe of conduit that will get me down into the ground from this outlet and then go into a 90 degree fitting. So according to code, this sharp edge right here on just some cutoff conduit is too sharp. So to get around it, you need to put on a male fitting in order to protect the wiring. After gluing the joints together, I secured the outlet box to the building. Then also place a strap near the bottom. A great thing about conduit is the flex that it has. So I used my boot to push it into the building as I was securing it. So the purpose of an LB is so that you can go around a tight corner in two steps rather than one. Meaning you can take off the back, pull through your entire amount of Romex, and then feed it back down so that you can make this tight corner really easily. Before I continue, I'd like to thank the Swedish beauty tech brand Foreo for partnering with me on this video. Look guys, just because we're rough and tough in our jobs doesn't mean we can't take care of our skin so that we can look good while doing it. If you want something that isn't time demanding or complicated, then check out this UFO2 at home supercharged facial device that will give you a facial in just two minutes. There are so many masks you can use with the UFO2. This gives you professional level treatment from the comfort of your own home at a much smaller cost than a spa. It features T-sonic pulsations that relax facial and neck muscle tension points while boosting skin's radiance. You might think this is just for women, but we should all be conscious of skincare. So I recommend picking up one for you and for anybody you need a good gift for. Okay, let's talk about material choice for going in ground and the depth of your trench. It all correlates to one another. In my case, I'm using a PVC conduit, but if I were to use metal conduit, I could actually get away by code of only going six inches into the ground. However, I didn't want to do, deal with bending or anything like that, so I went with PVC conduit, meaning that I have to go at least 12 inches into the ground. The minimum depth of my trench has to at least be 12 inches, with the stipulation that a GFI, a GFCI needs to be on the circuit somewhere. So that is the reason I'm adding an outlet to it. Not only is it handy to have outlets anywhere that you're gonna be doing electrical work anyways, but it also means that I can go to 12 inches. Whereas if I didn't add in a GFI on this line, then the minimum I would be required for my trench is 18 inches. So just be aware that there are stipulations about how deep you have to go with your trench. Uh, depending on what you're using. This line coming out is my Romex that's coming in from the breaker box, but now I'm gonna be feeding in my direct berry line, which is rated to be buried directly in this trench. What I'm trying to do is feed it in with my right hand, pull it out with my left, and I'm using my boot to try to keep the pipe going on. I fed through enough line to go down the trench, then whatever length to get me to where I would install my first outlet. Now that I have my wiring over here, it's pretty much the same song and dance. You need some sort of hole to get you now to the inside for a LB to fit through. Again, stubbing through to go all the way to the inside. From here, you have a straight piece of conduit. Again, this will all be glued. And then down here, I'm gonna have another 90 with that fitting in order to make sure that it meets code. Once you glue it up, then you can feed it in.
a little pre-bend goes a long way. Also note they make lubricant for chasing wires and it really does make it easier. Again, taking off the back of the LB to make chasing this wire up and in quick and easy. I attached another strap to the bottom of the conduit, then buttoned up the back and called this project done. Well, other than filling in the trench, which is the easy part. There, like it never happened, except it did. Now, of course, I'm doing this for a shed, but the process can be used for anything you want to get power to out in your yard, whether it be a pool or an outdoor kitchen or maybe even a water feature. Really, the thing that you need to consider is do you have enough space in your breaker panel and, of course, all, your, all of your local codes? I'm very comfortable tackling this project on my own, but there is no shame in hiring a professional if you are not. I hope that you enjoyed this project, and I'll link to the many other electrical videos that I've done in the past in case they are helpful to you. I'll see you on my next project. Anyway.